Hi, I'm Vinay Opal and I'm back with episode number 4 from the Rare series. This time, I'm going to be talking about the effect of gravity on de Broglie waves. And I formulated a question, a very unique question based on this paper here. So, this paper was published in 1975. It's a very famous paper now. And it's referred to as the cow experiment. Um, I, it has nothing to do with cows, but it's based on the initials of the surnames of the authors, Colella, Overhauser and Werner. So, in this paper, this was the first experiment to demonstrate the influence of gravity on the phase and on, uh, on interference of neutron beams. So, let's have a look at the concept and then I'll show you the question. So, for a general wave, for a normal wave, if a, if a wave travels a path length of x, the phase change is going to be kx, which is 2 pi by lambda into x. So, this is very something that should be familiar to everyone. However, what if the wavelength is variable? If the wavelength is variable, I, can, I can't write this anymore. I'll have to write 2 pi by lambda times dx and then integrate it because the wavelength is now a variable quantity. So, for a matter wave, I can write wavelength as h by p and therefore my phase change over a path length of x becomes this quantity. I have, where h is the Planck's constant, 2 pi by h has been taken out of the integral and integral p dx is the quantity that we need to calculate. Here dx is the path length. It's not the x coordinate, it's the path length. So, one can very well imagine a scenario in which the momentum is changing because of gravity and therefore that will represent a case of variable wavelength. So, that is exactly what the question is based on. Let's have a look. Let's just read the question once. Consider a continuous neutron beam shown in green fired at 30 degrees to the horizontal with speed u. So, this is the green beam. It follows a parabolic path due to uniform gravity. Another continuous neutron beam shown in red consists of neutrons made to move in a straight line path horizontally with a constant speed of u root 3 by 2. So, this is the red beam. Notice that I have purposely given the velocity of the red beam as u root 3 by 2. So, that means that both the beams have the same horizontal component of velocity. A wave undergoes a phase change of kx over a path length of x where k is the angle of wave number. This is what we just saw previously. Because neutrons can be treated as de Broglie waves, they will similarly undergo a phase change from point O to A. So, both these beams are going to undergo a phase change as they travel from O to A. The mass of the neutron is m, Planck's constant is h and the acceleration due to gravity is g. The value of u such that the difference in the phase changes of the two beams from O to A is 2 pi. So, like I said, both these beams are, und are undergoing phase changes, but they are going to have different phase changes and the difference between them is 2 pi. So, in order for that to happen, the speed u is given by this quantity, cube root of ngh by m, where n is some, uh, some number and which whose value we want to compute. So, this is the question. Let us have a look at the solution. So, for the green beam, I can write my phase change as 2 pi by lambda times ds, where ds is my displacement at some general point along the beam. Here for the red beam, instead of ds, I will simply use dx. So, that is what I have written here. The first term is the phase change for the green beam, where lambda 1 represents the wavelength for the neutrons in the green beam. And the second term, notice I have used dx. That's the reason is because the red beam only has horizontal displacement and lambda 2 is uh, referring to the wavelength of the neutrons in the red beam. And further I have just replaced lambda in terms of momentum by writing lambda as h by p in both cases. Here notice I have used the variable px. So, red beam only has horizontal component but I have used this px because since both the green and the red beams have the same horizontal velocity, therefore they also have the same horizontal component of momentum. So, Px is also the horizontal component of the momentum of the green beam. Now, a very neat trick 
or a neat way to do this is to recognize that the term here PDS can be written as a dot product. The reason is that momentum is parallel to the infinitesimal displacement. Momentum is always tangential to the trajectory, so is infinitesimal displacement. And therefore, I can write PDS as P dot DS, which I can further break it down into PX DX plus PY DY. And because PX is same for both the beams, the PX terms will cancel out and we will only be left with an integral of PY DY. That is what I have written here. The change in phase is only 2 pi by h, the difference in phase rather, sorry, is only 2 pi by h times integral p y dy. So, this is the only integral that we need to evaluate. Now, it is just a bit of mathematics which is quite straightforward. The way to write p y, I can simply write p y as m times v y and I can write v y using kinematics as u square minus 2 g y, u y square minus 2 g y, where u y is the y component of the initial velocity for the green beam. Here, just one point where you should be careful is when you are writing vy as a square root, the square root is a positive quantity. So, for x less than equal to r by 2 where r is the when r is the range of the projectile. So, basically during the ascent, I will use a positive value, positive root for py and during the descent, I need to use the negative root. Now, because the magnitudes are same and the parabola is symmetrical, instead of integrating piecewise from 0 to h and then back for during the descent, what I will do is I will only integrate during the ascent and multiply it by 2. So, I will have delta phi is 2 pi by h times integral p y dy times 2 from 0 to capital H. This is the y coordinate elements and you will get this quantity. So, I will leave the calculation up to you. So, just substituting delta phi is 2 pi, you will get the value of u y and I can write u y as u sin 30 that is u by 2 simply substitute it there and you should get this as the value of u so the value of n would be 12. So I hope you guys have understood on how you can write the change in phase induced by gravity. So I'll leave you with a practice problem from Pathfinder. This is Pathfinder Modern Physics uh, question number 5 from Build Your Understanding. So you can read the question yourself and you can give it a try. A more involved version of this question came in IPHO 2006. I have attached the link for the problem in the description. If you want to have a look, you can. But if you solve this Pathfinder question, that should be pretty good enough for uh, J aspirants. So I think one thing I may not have mentioned is uh, 2006 was the year that I cleared info. Uh, I was amongst the top 30 students in India to be selected for the camp. Uh, the, the final camp before IPHO. I was pretty terrible at experiments, so I didn't clear that camp, but uh, uh, 2006 is the paper for my year. So that's it for today. See you guys. Good night.